In the first lesson of the second unit, we will consider equations reducible to quadratics, also known as quadratics in disguise, and we will learn how to solve them. First of all, let's consider this quadratic equation, and let's, let's look at its structure. What we have is a, an expression on the left-hand side that is made up of three terms. We have a constant term, And we have two other terms that share the same base, but they have different powers. And the powers are such that we have A2 here and A1 here that is not written. So the idea is that the terms with the X have one power that is double of the other. Now, obviously, this is not a quadratic in disguise, it's a quadratic. However, if we consider this equation that follows the same structure, we have x to the 4 plus 5x squared minus 14 equals 0. And the structure of this expression on the left hand side is similar to the structure that we have discussed above. It's made up of three terms. One of them is a constant term, and there are two terms with identical bases. In this case, it's the x, but the powers are such that one power is double of the other. And the way to solve this quadratic, uh, this, this equation that is not a quadratic, is to say, okay, we let z equal x squared. Note that this is the term that we choose, the one with the smaller power. If z is equal to x squared, then by squaring both sides, z squared is equal to x to the 4. So our equation becomes, instead of x to the 4, it's z squared plus 5 and instead of x squared, I write z, minus 14 equals 0. And now this is a quadratic. So basically what we have done is that we have changed this equation that was not a quadratic into a quadratic in z. That's why we call this a quadratic in disguise. It's not a quadratic, but it was reducible into a quadratic. Now we proceed here in the normal way. We factorize in this case because it's easily factorizable. We have z and z. The signs are different, plus and minus. Obviously we have a 7 and a 2. Since this is positive, the 7 is here and the 2 is here. And that's your factorization. Then this means that z equals negative 7 or 2. But remember, this equation was given in x, and if you are to solve it, then you should, your answer should be x equals something. So z is basically x squared is equal to negative 7, but this is rejected, obviously because a square term must be either zero or positive. It cannot be a negative because there are no real sol solutions to x squared equals negative seven or x squared equals two. So if x squared equals two, then x equals plus or minus root two. And that's your solution for this equation in, in, in the power 4. Let's take another example. Again, we notice that we have the same structure. Three terms, one of them is a constant. The two other terms have the same base with the power of 1 is double the power of the other. So immediately, your z is equal to x cubed. And mentally, 
you obviously know that z squared is equal to x to the 6. You don't have to write the second one, but it's just for explanation. Then, writing your equation, you end up with z squared minus 7z minus 8 equals 0. And let's factorize. So, z and z, the signs are different. The bigger factor is with the negative, so it's 8 and 1. So, z, which is x cubed, equals negative 1 or 8. Now that this is a cube term, the negative is acceptable. So we take the cube root, giving us x equals negative 1 or 2. Yet another example. In this case, you may be tempted to solve by expanding. Because you know when you expand this, you'll end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1, perfect square expansion, plus 12x plus 12 plus 27 equals 0. And let's collect the like terms to get x squared plus 14x plus 13 and 27 is 40. And then you factorize. You get x and x plus 10 and plus 4. So x equals negative 10 or negative 4. The problem with this method, even though it's correct, is that you had to expand. If I want to do it in another way, I notice that the identical bases are here x plus 1 raised to the power 1, x plus 1 raised to the power 2, and the constant term, so I can easily, I can let z equals x plus 1. So your equation becomes z squared plus 12z plus 27 equals 0. And you solve this by factorization to get z plus 9 times z plus 3 equals 0, giving you z, which is x plus 1, as being equal to negative 9 from the first bracket or negative 3 from the second. Now you want x, not x plus 1, so you subtract 1 from either side to get x equals negative 10 or negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And in this case, there's less algebra involved. Yet another example. I suggest you pause the video for a while, try to solve it yourself, and come back. In this case, what I'm going to do now is save a little time. I will not write z as being equal to x to the 4. I can immediately write this as z squared minus 15z minus 16 equals 0. Factorizing gives us z and z, different signs, 16 and 1, giving you immediately x to the 4 equals negative 1 or 16. You reject this because even powers cannot be negative and you're left with x to the 4 equals 16. Taking the fourth root gives you x equals plus or minus 2.
Now you may even want to do it this way, but this is a little bit extra. Consider this original equation. You know that z is x to the 4, but you don't even have to introduce z. When you factorize, you can write x to the 4 here and x to the 4 here plus 1 and minus 16 because you know that this is going to be z, which is x to the 4. And you can conclude that x to the 4 equals negative 1, and that is rejected, leaving you with x to the 4 equals 16, thus x equals plus or minus 2. So it's a very simple principle. However, I would like you to remember, for even roots, you cannot have a negative under the root. That's number one. Number two, if you are working with x squared equal to 16, don't forget that you have x equals plus or minus 4. Two possibilities. However, with odd roots, you can have the cube root of a negative, and that's equal to another negative number. The cube root of a positive is a positive, and in both cases, you only have one answer. For example, the cube root of 8 is simply 2. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3.